Welcome back. In the last video, what we did is we looked at capacitors and we talked about capacitance in RC circuits. Okay, and of course, this is in the context of instrumental analysis for the purpose of someone doing a chemistry degree. Okay, now this voltage right here, and let me do this in a, in a bold color just so you know what I'm talking about. This voltage right here of the battery, this is the input voltage. Okay, now the input voltage is constant. Okay, so this is a constant value. Okay, now that's a constant value, and we'll, as we'll see later, that actually comes to play when we're actually going to manipulate this equation a little bit. Okay, so these are defined as, as instantaneous um, quantities. So notice the lowercase v's here. So basically, the input voltage is always going to have to be equal the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor plus the instantaneous voltage across the resistor. And the reason that has to be the case is because um, both of them are components of the um, input voltage, and the input voltage is constant. So they always have to sum um, to equal each other. Okay. But as we saw in the last video, um, we looked at the capacitance, and we saw that in general, the maximum charge that a capacitor could, um, could carry is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage of the capacitor. But what we can do is we can express that in instantaneous notation, and we can say that Q, the instantaneous charge, is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor. What I can do now is, is I can divide both sides by the capacitance, okay? And so what I end up with is that the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor is equal to the instantaneous charge across the capacitor divided by the capacitance, okay? Well, that's good. And so I could basically, uh, and we'll actually do this later, is I can take this value and I can substitute it in here. Okay, and that's important to realize, okay? Now, one thing that we also have to bear in mind about this is that when we charge the battery, the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor is going to increase, right? So when you charge the battery, this quantity right here should increase. But if the input voltage is constant, that would mean that the voltage across the resistor would have to decrease, okay? And I hope that makes sense. Well, let's actually calculate what the instantaneous voltage across the resistor would be. Well, in general, we know that the um, we know that the voltage, in this case across the resistor, is going to be equal to the current across the resistor times the resistance, right? Well, again, just like we did in the last case, let's, let's do that in instantaneous notation. So the voltage across the resistor is going to be equal to the current across the resistor multiplied by the resistance, right? So basically what I can do now is, I'll do this in purple, I can take this value and I can substitute it in here, okay? So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get that the input voltage is going to be equal to the instantaneous charge that's held by the capacitor divided by the capacitance plus plus um, the, the instantaneous current multiplied by the resistance of the resistor. So you can effectively think of this term that's in blue, this is the capacitor term, and the one that's in purple, this is your resistor term, okay? And all we did is we, we solved for voltage in both cases, and in, in, in the case of this equation, the instantaneous voltages, okay? So I hope that makes sense, okay? But now let's do something further. Let's actually express this equation right here. Let's express it in differential notation, okay? So let's say that an infinitesimally small change in the input voltage, okay, is gonna be equal to an infinitesimally small change in the charge held by the capacitor divided by the capacitance, that's just a constant, right? Plus um, an infinitesimally small change in the current uh, time, excuse me, times the resistance, right? Times the resistance, okay? Well now, let's, let's divide both sides by dt, because what we're talking about is how these things change with respect to time. Okay, so if we divide both sides by dt, we get this. Okay, but I don't like it in this form. Let's actually rearrange it a little bit. So let's rearrange this equation. And we don't have to do anything to the, to the left side, but we get dv input dt is going to be equal to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dq dt times 1 over the capacitance plus di dt times the resistance, okay? Well, one thing we found out in the last video is we found out that this quantity right here, let me do this in red, this quantity is just the instantaneous current, right? So I can further, I can further rewrite this equation as dv input dt is equal to, well, this is just 
This is basically just going to be the instantaneous current divided by the capacitance plus di dt, right, the rate of change of the current, times the resistance, okay? But what did we say about the input voltage, v, big V sub i? The input voltage is constant. It's not changing. So what would be the rate of change of the input voltage with respect to time? Well, it's just zero, right? So actually, let me... Actually, let me just rewrite this, okay? So the, the dVi dt, that's just zero. And the reason it's zero is because the input voltage isn't changing. So I get that zero is equal to I over C, the capacitance, plus dI dt, right, times the resistance, okay, of the resistor. Well, let's actually do this. Let's actually move, um, let's move um, I over, over C to the other side. So we get I negative i over c is equal to di dt times the resistance. And you could you could do this on your own time to figure out how we get this, but a simple rearrangement, an algebraic rearrangement of this equation is going to get di over i is equal to negative dt over rc. Okay. Well, what do we have at this point now? What do we have? Well, now we have a differential equation. Right? We have a differential equation. We have all the i's on the left side. We have all the t's on the right side, so now we can just integrate. But the, the challenge now is actually figuring out what our bounds are going to be. What are our bounds? Well, if you think about what the time would be, well, you're obviously going to start at time equals zero, and then you're just going to go to some time. We don't know what that time is. Um, certainly, we can plug in numbers later to figure out what it is. But we're, you're going to go to some time period after zero, right, after your starting point. What's going to be your balance for I? Well, what you're going to have is an initial, you're going to have an initial current, right? An initial current, and that's going to be capital I, um, number one, because it's not instantaneous, but also because it's going to be the maximum current. And then you're going to go to some instantaneous current right here. And again, we're going to have to plug in numbers to see exactly what it's going to be. But let's actually calculate what this is going to be. Well, what's going to be the integral? What's the integral of 1 over I di? Well, that's just the natural log of i, right? So we're going to get natural log, natural log of i, and that's going to be evaluated from i initial, right? i initial to i. Now, what happens if you integrate negative dt? Well, that's just going to be negative t, and we pull out the rc, and so that's over rc, and that's evaluated from 0 to t. Okay, so now we have this. Let's actually um, expand this out a little bit. Okay, so this will be the natural log of I, right? Natural log of I divided by I initial, right? This is sim using simple logarithm laws. So the natural log of I divided by I initial is equal to, is equal to negative T over RC minus negative zero over RC, right? I just I just evaluated it from zero to T, right? Take the upper bound minus the, the lower bound, but this is just zero, right? So that whole term cancels out, okay? So now what we have is the natural log of I over I initial is equal to negative T over RC. Well, what we're essentially gonna be solving for in the end, and we'll, we'll see this later, is we're gonna be solving for the instantaneous current. Okay, and that's this guy right here. So how do we isolate instantaneous current? Well, we have to get rid of the natural log, so we're just going to exponentiate both sides of the, equ of the equation. So we're going to exponentiate this. We don't have to do it over here. And so what we're ultimately going to get is we're going to get I over the initial current is equal to E, and we'll, I'll do it in exponential notation, exponential negative T over RC. Okay? Well, we're trying to isolate the instantaneous current, so let's actually multiply both sides by the initial current. So I get the instantaneous current is equal to the initial current times the exponential function where the argument is negative t over rc. So something should immediately pop up in your head, and that's what is the value of this right here? Well, r is the resistance. That's a constant, right, for the resistor, and it's positive. C is the capacitance, that's positive as well. Time is always positive, but you're taking the negative of that. So this value that, that's in the argument of the exponential function, that's gonna be less than zero. 
So my question to you is this, what happens when you take e to any number that's less than zero? Well, your exponential as a function as a whole should be less than one. So when you take e to say something like, you know, 0.5 or something, right? That number is going to be less than one that you get. So you're gonna be taking a number that's less than one. It's gonna be greater than zero, right? Because e to anything cannot be less than zero. So it's gonna be between zero and one, okay? But you're taking the initial current and multiplying it times a number less than one. So what does that mean about your instantaneous current right here? Well, if you're taking the initial current, whatever that happens to be, and multiplying it by a number that's between zero and one, does that mean that your instantaneous current is going to be more or less? So that's kind of like saying you, you have an instant, you have an initial current and you say the value of your exponential function was like one fourth or something like that. Okay. That means that your instantaneous current is going to be one fourth of your initial, right? One fourth of your initial. So that means that um, over time, what's happening? Over time, your current is actually exponentially decaying, okay? And that's something that's extremely important to realize. And this basically comes, all this comes from the fact that um, an instantaneous voltage that we measure across the capacitor is going to increase when we charge the capacitor, okay? And that increase in um, voltage across the capacitor when we charge it has to correspond to a decrease in the instantaneous voltage across the resistor, right? So these two things are not constant depending on whether we're charged or discharged or losing charge and things like that. But the whole point is those two things have to sum to equal a constant, and that constant is the input voltage. So what's a key takeaway from this? Well, a key takeaway is that the current that we have um, the current that we have is going to exponentially decay with time. So what's a key takeaway from this is that and you should memorize this formula and you should know that um, the current in an RC circuit is going to exponentially decay with time. And just bear in mind that the argument of the exponential function is always going to be negative. So therefore, um, we're basically going to be multiplying our initial current times a number that's less than one, and so our instantaneous current will be smaller, okay, at some given time that's not zero, okay? So I hope this video helps. See you in the next video.